Climate change poses risks to industry, but also presents opportunities for developing new products, markets and competitive advantages inherent in the low-carbon economy. Hi, I'm Natalie Becker and welcome to It's Africa's Time. Today we visit three primary industries working with natural resources in Africa to see how they're responding to their own particular social and environmental challenges. Global Carbon Exchange is an environmental sustainability consultancy. We work with organizations and industries from all sectors in order to reduce their impact on the environment because we believe that companies, corporations and industries are or have been in the past the largest contributors to environmental degradation and therefore they also have the opportunity to make the biggest changes to moving towards a greener and cleaner environment and economy. Companies around the world are starting to incorporate sustainable development objectives into their strategic objectives. They realize that they can maximize on their eco-advantage, uh, they can reduce their operational costs by resource efficiency, and they can create new opportunities in different markets. Various companies in different industries would have different challenges in terms of climate change and in terms of sustainable development. For example, fisheries would have greater concern about depleting fish stocks. Utility companies and mining companies, for example, would, have a, would be more concerned with water usage as well as electricity consumption. Transportation industry might be more concerned with petrochemical usages and depletion of that resource. So the challenges between companies and industries are obviously very vast and they are different, but the solutions are often quite similar in terms of how they can innovatively address the challenges for the changing climate. We've boarded Oceania's largest ship, which has just come in from sea, to gather information about the company's transformation journey. In the second part of our report, we'll talk about the sustainable management of marine resources. Political change doesn't really um, lead automatically to widespread economic benefit for all. We believe that a broad-based approach to transformation is necessary and particularly focused on aspects like job creation and skills development. The Black Economic Empowerment Programme, or BEE, was launched by the South African government to redress the inequalities of apartheid by giving previously disadvantaged groups in South Africa economic privileges not previously available to them. It includes measures such as employment preference, skills development, ownership and management transformation, socio-economic development and preferential procurement. If you look then in the fishing industry, commercial fishing rights are allocated based on your level of compliance with various criteria, um, the most important of which is transformation. In 2004, we started our five-year South Africanisation programme, where we were focused on training 123 crew of the Midwater Horse Mackerel Fishery to firstly create jobs and then secondly look at alleviating the skills shortage in the uh, maritime sector and particularly in the fishing sector as regards navigational engineers etc. You know if you look back at 2004 most of the senior officers and um, engineers were all Russian. South Africans were really deckhands and they worked in factory. Whereas currently we've got 69 South Africans on board with 20 of them being at officer level, holding positions at engineering or technical level. So there's been quite a change. We also have spent 3.7 million rand on the training programs within that South Africanization program. And it's gone towards training the crew as well as preparing them to 
eventually take command of this vessel. Eugene Burgens is a success story because he was one of the original recruits who joined in 2003. He's managed to stay um, on the programme and is still with the Desert Diamond. I started straight after I matriculated with Oceana. So I started off in the fish factory where we're processing fish. From that position I went onto the deck as an able seaman. In my current position I'm a mate on board a vessel. We're now in the control room with Oceana's CEO, Francois Cattell. The Cooler Trust was created in 2006. It was at a time when our board and our shareholders thought it was important to spread the wealth created by this company more broadly. So 11.9% of our equity was being placed in trust for all of our black employees. There's a lot of positivity around what has been achieved to date. Lambert's Bay has been very important to the company. It's where the company was founded in 1918. As a result of some changes in fishing patterns, our original processing activities in Lambert's Bay had to be curtailed and rationalized in 1990s. Instead of walking away from the town, which was at that, that time totally reliant on Oceana for its existence, we decided to diversify our activities. And so we turned one of our fish processing factories into a French fry facility. With the sluiting of the fish mill aanleg, was ons the opportunity to go to the Artup aanleg, which was also part of the Oceana building. It has made that not one of us was working with them. At the time, Oceana commissioned a feasibility study to determine which locally available raw materials could be processed viably to establish a sustainable alternative business. That was for us as a community, committed as Oceana, to an opposite of not only the workshops, but also the involvement in the community. Corporate social responsibility also forms part of Oceana's overall transformation policy. The company operates a clinic and provides medical assistance to employees who are not able to afford medical aid, for example. They also provide them with literacy and numeracy programs, as well as official training qualifications. In order to assist the Lamberts Bay municipality, Oceana has invested locally in infrastructure and schools, as well as providing sea rescue and firefighting services in the region. Francois, the fishing industry faces some interesting challenges in terms of sustainability and its contribution to food security. The Lucky Star brand is Oceana's main contributor to the South African protein footprint. Fish proteins are of the most affordable of all of the animal proteins. And as such, our products reach an important sector within the African continent. Sustainable resource management is key to Oceana's business practices as we rely on a renewable natural resource. As such, we are a founding member of the Responsible Fisheries Alliance, and we are proud that all of our targeted species fall within the South African Sustainable Seafood Initiative's green list. The government is responsible in managing our resource for setting our annual total allowable catches, which is the volume of fish resources that we can harvest. We collect data on all of our vessels. We allow observers on our vessels from the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, and we assist where possible in funding outside projects which could assist to better data collection and understanding of how our resources exist. 2011 was the seventh year that Oceana has been included on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange's Social Responsibility Index. The Responsible Fisheries Alliance is an alliance between WWF and the four biggest fishing companies who have committed time and resources to implementing and entrenching um, responsible fisheries management in South Africa. The most important element of that is an ecosystem approach to fisheries, which really holistically considers um, the whole ecosystem, including the social and economic elements of fisheries management. The Alliance has catalyzed a number of really great outcomes. One that illustrates this nicely is the issue of seabird bycatch. What was happening is that seabirds were being killed behind trawlers. The Alliance then catalyzed a project to better understand the solutions to address the problem. The vessels then immediately implemented the recommendations coming out of that project with WWF 
and the fishing companies lobbying government to implement improved regulations, we were able to successfully make those changes and today regulations and mitigation measures are being implemented sector-wide and have dramatically reduced seabird mortalities in our fishing vessels. An insightful journey into the world of the fishing industry and its contribution to sustainability. But our journey doesn't end in the port of Cape Town, so stay with us on It's Africa's Time as we travel to our next destination. Exaro Resources is passionate about water conservation and their excavation and construction efforts focus on storing and reusing processed water and on collecting as much rainwater as possible. Wolfie Jan oversees these water projects, which makes up part of the mine's greater sustainability strategy. Please give us a brief introduction to Grote Geluk. Grote Geluk mine was established in 1975 when ISCO decided to produce coal for their steel making processes. It is not the same as is with other coal mines where you have seams of definite coal and shale. In our case it's all blended. Coal layers are very thin and the shale layers are very thin and we cannot mine it separately. The process used to separate the coal from the shale is a dense medium separation process which employs high quantities of water. By adding magnetite to the water, this dense medium causes the coal to float and the shale to settle out. In this area where we have scarce water, we have been allocated a water license to use 7.6 million cubic meters from the Mokolo Dam. This is all we have and all what Mokolo Dam can provide to us. So for us it's very important that we do whatever we can to conserve water, save it and then it gives us the opportunity in future to expand our operations. Slime water and storm water are precisely managed on another two locations within the open cast mine. The water from the slimes, the uneconomic material left over after the process, settles out in the slimes pond and is pumped back into the system. Uh, our stormwater system on top of the plant level uh, is divided into two sections, a clean water and a dirty water system. All the dirty water is contained uh, within stormwater channels. It's automatically desalted uh, and the desalted water is pumped back to the plant for reuse, whereas our clean water is diverted into the surrounding environment. In addition to the National Water Act, government issued regulations on the use of water for mining, which stipulates how mines can and should use stormwater. This project is important, firstly to comply with legislation, and secondly to reduce risk during flood events, as mining systems will then also be able to cater for a 1 in 50 year flood event. In 1975 when the mine was developed, we also had to develop a town and all the associated infrastructure like roads and rail. And with the town development, there was a water treatment built and this plant produces uh, potable water for the municipality. When the town became part of the Lepalale municipality, Exaro continued to operate and maintain the Zealand water treatment works. This facility, which supplies bulk water to the municipality at cost price, is part of Exaro's responsibility towards the community. In recognition of the water quality it produces, it has recently been awarded the prestigious Blue Drop certification from the Department of Water Affairs. So we're busy currently upgrading our pipeline from here, Zealand to town, which is approximately about 40 kilometers of pipeline, together with reservoirs and pumping mains. As government, we are spending an amount of 234 million for that project. Now, the benefit to the town is enormous. It's firstly, water security to the community. And secondly, it is to entice development. So we see it as a stimulus both to the economy, to the country, and whatever we're doing here, 49 million people depend on it. Behind you, you see the new power station and uh, we need to service that as a municipality as well. We're standing next to the section of the Grote Geluk mine where innovative coal screening processes take place as part of the Grote Geluk Madupi expansion project. GMEP is the expansion of the existing Grote Geluk mine infrastructure to facilitate the exclusive supply of coal to the new ESCOM Madupi power station. 
its newly constructed processing plant integrates state-of-the-art technology to optimize environmental performance with specific emphasis on water management. On the GMAP project, we've managed to reduce our water consumption by looking at our blasting techniques and technology that we're applying, as well as our crushing technology. Uh, our crushers that we're using on this processing plant reduces less fines during crushing. We're also applying dry screening technology where we're actually screening minus 4 millimeter material out of our processing plant. Also in the wet plant, we're applying new technology calling hyperbaric filters, where we reduce our water content within our fines that we do manage to wet. In our stockyard facility, as well as in the processing plant, we are sealing the entire environment. And so any spillages and processing water within our processing plant, we're all recycling that and contain that within our processing facility. We are aligned with Eskom's power station demand, but we will basically be fully commissioned by the end of next year, 2030. The fact that we will be one of the first mining operations that will be energy efficiency certified by Eskom is a good indication of our commitment in terms of uh, not only saving water, but also energy efficiency. Exaro employees and their dependents represent an important part of the population of the Waterberg Coalfield area. The company's social commitment is therefore essential to their global vision of sustainability. An example is the Moholo Academy, founded by Exaro, where unemployed youth from the area were trained in brickmaking and business skills. Upon completion of the course, the top performing members were selected to enter into an agreement with Exaro to found a brickmaking factory. This is a youth project and currently employed eight people. We produce uh, at around 2,000 bricks in a day as our daily target. They have a lot of demand for the bricks at Lipalale, so we do supply in the community the bricks that we produce. As, as in the recent past, they've become totally independent of Exaro support. They now run the business on their own and produce about 10,000 uh, bricks per, per week. I think historically sustainability was defined as a business that meets the demands of today without impacting or negatively impacting on businesses of the future and enable them to meet the objectives in the future. We are further refining this broad framework of sustainability taking into account its cross-functional nature which does not only span the areas of safety, health and environment, but also looks at the areas of corporate investment, of community involvement, of community empowerment. And so having said that, our aim is to obtain the most value from our sustainability efforts and for all our stakeholders and to incorporate sustainability thinking throughout our total business processes and also include that into our strategy. Obviously, we need to align our corporate sustainability and social responsibility strategies to support that. So even those need to be relevant today and also in the future. We hope you enjoyed a fascinating journey into the world of coal mining here in the beautiful Bushveld in the Limpopo province. We leave the felt now and head out for our next story. Good water management could present a lot of opportunities to the industrial sector. Firstly, it's a great way to save costs in terms of operations. Secondly, it can allow for a lot of innovation in terms of the techniques that you're utilizing to reduce water. Thirdly, it has um, direct environmental benefits um, by saving a very precious resource. And lastly, good water management can tie up with an organization's um, corporate social responsibility initiatives. Globally, there are over a billion people who do not have access to clean drinking water. A lot of those people are in Africa. And companies are at the forefront of water management and they have a great responsibility to their consumers, to the people, in terms of how they manage water. The core business of Altius Investment Holdings lies in the essentials of life energy, water and food. Today we meet New Water, one of the company's subsidiaries, and look at the water cleaning services which it provides. Later, we'll visit the recently privatised Cape Town market to shop for some fresh stories delivered by Altius. I'm next to the Vaal River, one of the most important rivers in South Africa, and close to the site of Anglo-American thermal coal New Vaal Colliery, where new water is contracted to purify mine water. As part of Anglo Coal's commitment to more sustainable and environmentally responsible mining practices. New Water Design built and commissioned a 15 million litre a day mobile and modular water treatment plant here at New Vaal Colliery. 
The plant produces up to 20 million litres of purified water every day and uh, it is the largest mobile and modular plant of its kind in the world. We believe mobile units gives us a large amount of flexibility that um, you can build a plant and scale it out and make it larger and smaller as you need it. Uh, we're also able to install it extremely quickly so we can have water produced within weeks instead of months. We also get a very fast return on our investment and largely it also allows us to remove the plant and deploy it elsewhere where it might be needed. Situated on the Free State Bank of the Vaal River in South Africa, the Anglo-American thermal coal Nuval Colliery was established in 1983 to exclusively supply coal to the Eskom Letabo power station. The Vaal River is a vital source of water for industry and agriculture and supports around 12 million consumers in and around Gauteng, the economic heartland of South Africa. The mine wastewater resulting from production processes and the rainwater runoff used to be stored in a large reservoir and left to evaporate. Now it's channeled to the new water plant, cleaned and pumped to the power station's cooling system, resulting in a cost-effective cycle which reduces water extraction from the river. Anglo-American Thermal Coal strives to maximize the use of mine-affected water as much as possible. But where there is an excess, we need to treat that water in order to be able to use it in other processes. I think water is a finite source and there are many things that drive the demand for water. Growing populations, urbanization, climate change. And as a result, we're always going to find that there's going to be stress on our water resources. I think a project like this, although it doesn't provide water directly to people, goes a long way in helping in reusing water from industry instead of taking water from another source. And I think taking water to the people and treating water closer to where it's needed will also help address those things. There are other sources like the ocean, so desalination and water reuse I think will go a long way in starting to address those objectives in the years to come. New Water invented the 16-inch reverse osmosis technology in South Africa. It was pioneered at one of the world's leading sewerage wastewater reclamation plants in Singapore, where wastewater and seawater desalination are common practice to supplement insufficient rainwater catchment areas. It is now back and being used in Africa for its socio-economic and environmental benefits. Two out of every five Africans lack access to an improved water supply. By 2015, Target 7C of the Millennium Development Goals aims to halve the proportion of people without sustainable access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation. When the Cape Town market was privatised by the City of Cape Town in March 2004, Altius made a successful bid and is now the controlling shareholder. What are your views as to the management of natural resources, specifically fresh produce, around the issues of sustainability? We know that global warming affects the way we manage our resources. Water pollution, water contamination and water as a resource becomes an impediment for all of the what we call food security. So it's finding that balance in terms of creating a sustainable planet that you can regenerate these resources but at the same time doing it in a responsible way. So when we trade with farmers we're asking them what are they doing to save the arable land? Are they damaging these crops? Is the topsoil being eroded without catchment areas? Is there better management control about our dams in South Africa? Is the water resource being used very carefully? Does the mining institutions or companies just dump their waste into the estuaries? We do intrinsically support the free market notion, but we have a responsibility that prices in terms of the food security issues is controlled so that people can have the basic food stuff, the vegetables, the potatoes, that these prices are not rocketed out. We've introduced new IT systems that allows us to pay the farmer within 24 hours. So his or her cash management is much, much better. We introduced what is called service level agreements that was never here historically. So the buyers can come here, they can have price discovery and they know that the produce that they sold is a produce that they can resell on the basis of equity and fairness. We're the only market in South Africa that has a covenant and that covenant speaks to a number of issues of governance, of transparency and fair practice and trade. Altius is an investment holding company centered on commodities, but also involved in the technological and financial sectors. As such, they are well positioned to observe international food commodities markets, which could play an important role in setting best practice benchmarks towards ensuring global food security in the future. 
Best practice would mean that we accept international benchmarks first. And one of the companies we closely associated with internationally, which, which trades in different commodities like soya, wheat and sugar, is Noble, which is listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange. And we benchmark their particular mechanisms in terms of what is best practice and that the price mechanisms used can transcend all strata of people who buy. So from the very poorest of the poor to the very more affluent people, all of them are getting prices benchmarked which is fair, and that's the change which we hope to bring. In addition to being a responsible corporate citizen in its business practices, Altius also makes a significant impact on communities in need through its social responsibility initiatives. When we started Altius, one of the first visions we had was to help communities, poorer communities, at least have a decent meal once a day or even once every two days. And part of the food on the table process means that many of the produce that we have, we can use it to absolutely change the lives of people. So many NGOs, churches and community organizations, they come here every day to collect thousands and thousands of kilos of vegetables which they turn into soups and actually feed communities. Thanks for joining us on It's Africa's Time and don't miss our next episode where we meet with the role players from three organizations who are acting as agents of change throughout Africa. Mm -hmm.